Hi everyone! In this video I'll teach you how to create the off-screen panels in Elementor by using the pop-up element. Some of you might call it off-canvas, which is just another synonym for the same thing. These kinds of panels don't have any purpose in particular by me because you can load them with any kind of content, but in general and quite often they can be used to house the main navigation that is all devices friendly. Because of the fact that they rely on a pop-up element, their appearance is fully controllable by the pop-up display conditions, which means that you can add them per page or template or simply site-wide. These off-screen panels are triggerable from themselves or any other link on a page. The concept is very simple and the only downfall for some of you is the fact that you're going to need the, the Elementor Pro because pop-ups are not part of the free version of Elementor. So let's do the job. First and foremost, I have to create a pop-up, of course. The training file includes two off-screen panels, one on the left and the other on the right-hand side, so I'm gonna need two pop-ups as well. I'll include both of them, so you don't need to, you don't have to bother trying to figure out the counter-side panel differences, okay? And I'm starting with the left one, whose name is going to be off-screen from left. Off-screen from left. Pop-up settings, if you didn't know, are hidden behind that little cog icon, which might be confusing, especially if you are the Elementor newbie. So my pop-up should be 500 pixels wide for the desktop and tablet devices, and then 300 pixels for the mobile devices. But any other width that you prefer shall do fine as well. Any other width that you need. Position is going to be left and top, left and top side of the screen. I don't need the overlay nor the close button because I'm gonna make my own controls. And the rest of the settings can be left as is. When it comes to the pop-up style, I'll add some background to it in order to make it more apparent against the page background. And I'm going to remove that box shadow. Under the advanced settings, I have to disable any kind of external control over this pop-up because this is no longer going to be the pop-up. I'm turning it into the off-screen panel. That's why I'm shutting off the close on overlay and the escape key options. One of the most important things to do under the advanced settings is to provide the custom class name to my pop-up or the off-screen panel. The custom class name shall be the off-screen left off dash screen dash left and this one is of course needed for the custom CSS and JavaScript that I'm going to add a little bit later. What is left is to add some content to my off-screen panel and in order to save some time and skip over filming the entire process of adding the content I have prepared everything up front so I'll just do the copy paste and briefly explain all the key points. Okay this off-screen panel, the left one, is meant to stick out all the time, just a little bit. As if we are dealing with a sticky bar or a sticky element, whatever. And that's why I'm using the ellipsis icon to indicate that there's something hidden here. So the icon itself is used for both, as an indicator of more content and a button or the trigger for the off-screen panel animation. Hence the icon click is JavaScript managed the icon should have a custom class name as well, which is going to be off-screen trigger left. Off-screen-trigger-left. So the custom class name is actually used as a reference to that very element. I'll talk about that a little bit later too. I also have to mention that I've been using steroids for a mentor add-on to build the layout of my off-screen panel, more precisely the Breaking Bad extension, which allows me to tailor the columns in more appropriate fashion. Steroid for Elementor add-on is free and can be downloaded from the WordPress plugins repository. The link is in the description of this video, just like everything else relevant to this video. Both of the columns are 100 bh tall, or a device as tall as the viewport is in any given moment. The major issue with the content column might be the fact that if you put a lot of content the scroller shows up. I could easily work around that by using the, the CSS later on, so in that sense, I'll provide the custom class name to the content column, 
which is going to be content column, content dash column. All right, the final step is to define the display conditions and do one and do the one very important setting that our off-screen panels cannot function without. So the display conditions depend on what you are up to regarding your off-screen panel. But for the sake of simplicity, I'll select the entire site option. And now the important part, the triggers. Hence this pop-up should be available all the time. And because it's no longer actually no longer a pop-up anymore, I have to load it as early as possible and for which I'll use the on-page load event within zero seconds. The last step is to save and close. My second pop-up is pretty much identical to the first one with a few minor differences. The difference number one being the alignment, which is now to the right-hand side of the screen. And the difference number two is the pop-up custom class name, which is off-screen right, off-screen dash right, instead of the off-screen left, of course. And the content-wise, I have removed the column with the ellipsis icon. Why? Because I'm going to keep this off-screen panel completely off-screen or hidden. I'm showing you a little bit different setup with the second panel, that's all. When it comes to the display conditions and the trigger settings, everything is completely identical to my first pop-up. It will be displayed across the entire side and the on-page load must be enabled too. Save and close and we are ready to get to the styling and JavaScript setup. At this point, our panels are quite useless because they do nothing but cover up the main content. We have to bring them to their initial positions, to the correct initial positions. That's why I'm going to need a little bit of the CSS and JavaScript code. With Elementor Pro, you can use the custom code feature that allows you to add both of these easy way and even assign the display conditions to the code as well. So I'll open a new custom code file. I'm going to name it off-screen panels. I'm going to add it uh, to the end of the body element and give it the lowest priority. I will also take that always load J jQuery checkbox because my ja JavaScript is jQuery based. Now let's define some CSS code before anything else. But in order to be able to understand the CSS code a little bit better, we have to analyze what's happening upon triggering the off-screen panel. So once you click on a link having a custom class name off-screen trigger left, which in this case is the ellipsis icon. The panel slides in and in the same time the content of the page is pushed away as if the panel is causing it, which is only the impression, that's not really happening here. Both of these animations were accomplished by the CSS, more precisely, by toggling the custom class name of the panel itself and the body element. Let's see how exactly. So the CSS code should be enclosed with a pair of style tags. And I'll start with the left-hand side panel. In order to speed all up, I'll just copy paste my CSS code piece by piece and briefly explain what every set of rules is supposed to do. Okay, the off-screen left is the custom class name, as you know, of my left-hand side panel. Essentially, this is the pop-up element wrapper and I'm not animating the wrapper directly itself, but rather its first child element, which is the dialog widget content. So this is the structure generated by Elementor and the custom class name dialog widget content is, has been assigned by Elementor. Hence the off-screen panel is 500 pixels wide for the desktop and tablet devices and in the same time there's 50 pixels wide bar that should stick out all the time, as I have said earlier. I have to move the panel 450 pixels to the left and which is going to be panel's initial position. Transition property is used for the purpose of animation here. The next block defines position of the panel when the panel when the panel's parent element has a different class name. The off-screen left in is the custom class name that I'm about to toggle by using the JavaScript. We're going to come to that part very soon. So, whenever the panel's parent element has that very class name, off screen left in, the panel's left position should become zero and which makes it fully visible. 
The content left in class name is another toggable class that should be added to or removed from the body element and which will make the page content move along with the off-screen panel. Just like the previous toggable class, this one shall be controlled by JavaScript as well. The last two blocks define positions of both the, the off-screen panel and the body element for mobile devices. All right, our left position should be smaller because the weight of the panel for mobile devices is 300 pixels only, excluding the bar width of 50 pixels. The right hand side panel CSS code is the exact opposite of the left one. Yep, it doesn't look like it's been opposite, the opposite, but you have to understand that even though the panel is supposed to slide in from the opposite direction, the starting and the ending points are still being calculated from the left hand side of the screen. All right, you'll have to wrap your head around a little bit. At this point, our CSS code is almost done. Almost. I'm going to add just a little bit more, but not before I'm done with JavaScript, because it's gonna make much more sense if I do it that way. All right, once again, I'm going to, it's gonna be much faster if I just copy paste my JavaScript code and provide a brief description of how it works, rather than typing everything from scratch, line by line. So my code has to be enclosed with a, with a pair of script tags, and I'm using the anonymous function to keep my code separated from any other existing code. Here I'm checking whether the DOM is loaded. That's why I added the event listener, which fires up as soon as that happens. When the DOM content is loaded, I can be sure the jQuery library is loaded as well. The second parameter to the event listener is the callback function that's going to be called as soon as the DOM is ready. That, this is why I put my initial code inside another function named check elementor. What's the point of this initial checkpoint? Well, in spite of the DOM being ready, some parts of Elementor are still catching up, so to speak. I'm not an expert, but I figured that this chunk of code ensures that everything is spot on, okay? So, once the Elementor Pro front end is available, I can safely run all of the code that is one way or another related to the Elementor Pro features. That's the reason I have enclosed the rest of the code with another function named handle off-screen panels. Which can, be, which, which, which can function correctly only if the Elementor Pro front end is completely loaded. I have mentioned at the beginning that I'm about to control my off-screen panel's appearance and animation manually rather than use Elementor's built-in controls. In that name, I disable the close button, close on overlay and the escape key. So my function handle off-screen panels does nothing else but catch the click on every link that has a custom class name off-screen trigger left or the off-screen trigger right. On every one of those clicks, two things are supposed to happen. First, toggle the custom class name of either the left or the right off-screen panel. And second, toggle the custom class name of the body element as well. I have defined both of these in my CSS code a few minutes ago, as you know. These are the off-screen left in and the content left in class names. Prevent default methods at the end stops any default actions assigned to the link, such as jumping to another page if the URL has been provided. At this point, I can save my code and do the preview. I forgot to mention that the main content also has a few links that I've assigned the custom class names to, so and for that reason all of them are capable of toggling my off-screen panels as you can see. So the point is that you can turn any element into the off-screen panel trigger by assigning it the custom class name off-screen trigger left or the off-screen trigger right. As easy as that. However, you can see that the main content doesn't move anywhere. In case you are okay with that, no need for an extra CSS. But in case you want to spice it up a little bit more, we'll have to go back to our CSS code for a moment. And I'm going to paste the, the, the last chunk, the missing link of our CSS and briefly explain its purpose. So the very first piece is what makes the body element animatable, so to speak. The content didn't move because of the position property being static by default. I also have to hide the horizontal scroller and which can be achieved by assigning the hidden value to the overflow x property. 
The second block is not that crucial because it should handle the edge case when the two off-screen panels are being opened simultaneously. So it has a function to bring the body element to zero position in case that happens. And the last piece of the puzzle is here to manage the scroll bar in case your off-screen panel gets overloaded with the content. I have mentioned it at the beginning of this tutorial and you can rewind the video to the part where I'm explaining the layout of the left-hand side panel. Alrighty, I guess that's it. Let's do the final preview. Just to mention that the training file link is in the description of this video so, so you can download everything back up, backed up. You can support my work by leaving the tip if you like. The button is next to the, sh the, to the video share button. Or you can maybe use my Elementor affiliate link in case you plan to buy the Elementor Pro version for yourself or your clients. I would really appreciate if you do that because it costs you nothing. In case you need one-on-one -on -one Elementor training service or need to solve a particular Elementor related problem, drop me a message and we can arrange the Zoom meeting. Find all the required information that relates to this tutorial in the description below. Other than that, stay well, peace and love.